Your spoons and everything, everything just, everybody get quiet a second here. Thank you.
But seriously, we need we need to thank a lot of people. Uh, Shepler's Western Wear provided all these, or just about all these decorations for us. And uh, Mrs. Tipping and Jay David went uh, down there yesterday and picked them up and set them up and all that. I'd like to thank uh, Mrs. Uh, Gutierrez and uh, Mrs. Trevino and Mrs. Brown for uh, fixing all this food for us. So I heard a, I heard this uh, rumor that uh, Roy Gutierrez was going to help, but uh, I tasted the food and it's pretty good, so I guess that wasn't true. Uh, before, uh, I'd like to see if uh, y'all want to see something really funny, just outstandingly funny. Y'all want to see something really funny? I need yeah. some feedback, yeah? yeah? Okay, look at the person sitting next to you, okay? <laughs> and don't laugh, there's somebody looking at you right now. Let's see? But uh, as you will recall, um, I'm a pretty mad kind of guy. Um, last week, or last last week, time's gone. Last year, um, I stood up here and I was I was pretty mad, and I was, I was mad about a particular thing, and that was my parents. I love my parents to death, but they do a lot of stupid things, and I figured that by standing up here last year and expressing my, you know, dislike of all the stupid things that they do at times, that maybe they would straighten up, you know, but instead they moved. So, uh, anyway, so now I can, say, I can say anything I want to about them now, unless they're going to send a tape of this to them. They'd probably do that. Um, but uh, my dad could not wait, you know, to the next day so he could prove to me that I was right last year. I was, uh, the next day was a Saturday, and I was just lounging around the house, had on a pair of shorts, didn't, on, didn't have any shoes and socks on, just kind of lounging around the house, you know, and uh, my dad walks up to me, I'm watching TV, and, and parents think that you don't know what you're doing. No matter what you're doing, you can be tying your shoes, and your parents don't think you know what you're not doing that right, son. The loop goes under, not over, okay? And um, so your parents don't think, and my dad, I don't know if my dad knows what my name is yet. All my life, for 22 years now, my dad has said, Hey, dummy, get over here. <laughs> if I'm dummy, my brother's stupid. And so sometimes, you know, my dad will call me stupid. I don't know who he's talking to me because I think my name is dummy or boy. You know, he called me boy all my life. So um, I was sitting around, like I said, uh, a year ago, tomorrow, and uh, just lying around the house, not doing anything. And uh, my dad walks up to me. Boy, what do you think you're doing? Well, dad, I'm... Uh, watching TV. Don't get smart with me, boy. <laughs> See, your parents are afraid that you're going to get smarter than them. That's why they say that. If they're really, you're really going to be smarter than them, then you're going to say something they're not going to know what it is. You know, so, you know parents are scared to death of that. And I, so I'm, I'm watching TV. Boy, do you mean to tell me? God, that sounds weird. Do you mean to tell me that you're in here watching TV? when the lawn needs to be mowed. Is that what you're telling me, boy? Uh, yes, sir. Don't talk back to me, boy. Speak to me. Uh, make up your mind, that's it. I said, well, um, yes, sir, I am. But get out there and mow that yard. So I, you know, get up there trying to do this fast I can. Get out there, don't put on any shoes and socks or anything. Just got my pair of shorts on. I'm out there mowing the yard, you know. And my dad walks up to me, you know, about five minutes later, I only got two or three strips mowing. He goes, boy, what do you think you're doing? Well, Dad, I think I'm mowing there. Don't get smart with me, boy. Do you mean to tell me that you're mowing the yard without any shoes and socks on? Is that what you're telling me, boy? Oh, uh, well, yes, sir, I am. What's going to happen, boy, if you slip and both of your feet are thrust under that lawnmower? It's going to cut them right off, boy. That's what's going to happen. Go inside and put on some tennis shoes right now. Now, I don't know about you, but I certainly feel a whole lot better in life knowing that I can wear a pair of tennis shoes and thrust my feet under a lawnmower and nothing's going to happen, you know. So uh, I go off and I start to turn around. Boy, come back here. I might be talking to you. I want to tell you something, boy. Don't you come running to me if you get your feet cut off. <laughs> okay, then, so, it's like moms are, you know, moms aren't much better. I, I prefer my mom to yell at me than my dad because dad has to drag it on for years, seven years from now. My dad's a boy, remember that time you did that stupid thing? Mow in the yard barefooted for five minutes? I don't remember that's the day I died. And, um, yeah, dad, I will too, probably, because you keep reminding me. And, um, but moms, they like to make you feel guilty about everything. I don't know what it is. Moms like to cry. They like to make you cry. Moms love tears. And, um, but your mom likes to make you feel guilty about everything. Your mom's standing at the front door just, Dara, come over here. So my mom knows my name. <laughs> Dara, come over here. 
Yes, ma'am? And here comes the part where they make you feel guilty. I didn't kill you for nine months so you could cut your feet off. <laughs> That's a mom's favorite excuse for everything, you know? You know, you walk in, you come home, you get a B minus in citizenship. What are you trying to do, Daryl? Embarrass the family? I didn't carry you nine months so you could embarrass the family, okay? Okay, Mom, I'm sorry. And so I figured if my mom's using that excuse, you know, maybe I could use that excuse, you know? Maybe that would work, because she seems to think it works. And so uh, one time, I can eat anything in the world except for squash and Brussels sprouts. Uh, anything you want, you know, snails, you know, yogurt, anything but Brussels sprouts and squash, I forgot what I was saying. And um, so my mom, what she do? She fixes like 50 pounds of Brussels sprouts. She gives me a little bitty piece of steak or something. And here, have some Brussels sprouts to go with that, Daryl. She starts dumping them on my plate, you know. I say, Mom, I don't like Brussels sprouts, my dad. You don't have to like them. You just have to eat them. <laughs> Fine, Dad. I said, Mom, you didn't carry me nine months just so I could eat Brussels sprouts. <laughs> Never ever say this when your dad, who has a senior ring on, <laughs> is sitting about three or four feet away from you. If you look real closely, you can probably see what year my dad graduated. <laughs> right there. But uh, seriously, folks, seriously, uh, I'd like to thank everybody. Oh, I'd like to thank Jack Petty. He did an excellent job on this backdrop right here. So, a uh, real good job. We do this, you know. I woke him up yesterday and knocked on his door, and he was always in bed, girl. Well, so, what? I need a <laughs> backdrop painted. And so, he did that on real short notice. And, uh, who, who, who's first out here? They keep changing the order on me. I'm supposed to be in control, and they change the order on me. Okay, Mrs. Fur and Miss Fur are going to come out here and sing a song called Surely Goodness and Mercy. I'm going to leave this with them. <laughs> okay, well, um, to get this little shindig off to a nice start, we thought we'd sing a, a country gospel. So this kind of has a little country feel to it. <laughs>
morning, Miles. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing all right. How about yourself? I'm doing pretty good. How about you? Oh, uh, I tell you, I wasn't doing good the other day, though. No. Uh, well, tell me about it. I had a pretty rough time. I was uh, just sitting around not doing anything, you know, yeah. and uh, I went upstairs to the attic and got out the uh, film projector. Yeah. And I was sitting there, you know, just watching a few home movies, and, uh, yeah. and I decided to stick my, stick my tongue in a little smut, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and I stuck it in there, and it was going pretty good, you know. It's just cruising down, getting off to the nuts and the bolts and everything. All of a sudden, it got stuck right over the uh, red hot burning light bulbs. Yeah. Oh man. And it started sizzling and burning, and you know, blood was popping everywhere. And oh, it was painful. Oh man. And so I got one of those uh, shrimp forks. That's it. Yeah. And I dug it out. Fine, I got it out. I tell you, that's painful. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. That happened about me the other day. I was just, you know, sitting around, nothing to do. Yeah. So I got some of that. Uh, uh, sandpaper. Yeah, sandpaper. The real poor stuff. Oh yeah. I started rubbing it on my lips a whole bunch of times. You know, just. You know, a good 20 to 40 times. Yeah, and, I can And then, you know, little shavings on my lips start falling off everywhere. Oh, jeez. Oh, and then I got some of that... Um, rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol. Oh. And then I put some on a cotton ball, and then I start, you know, just throw it on my lips like aqua velvet, you know? Jeez, that's true. It's fun, but it hurts like a dick in yeah. You know, it's like I was just sitting around watching... Uh, Reruns of the Jerry Lewis Telethon? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, just sitting there, and uh, I picked up my... Uh, Miniature statue of the Empire State Building. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, what do you do when you pick up that? You shove it up your nose. Of course, exactly. Yeah. So I started right. shoving it on my nose and everything, and I got to about the third floor, and, <laughs> and uh, you know, the antenna's coming out of my forehead. Oh, uh -huh. I got a little scar from the last time I did uh, that's that. Pain. <laughs> that's pain. That's pain, really. Uh, I was just sitting around the kitchen the other day, you know, and I'm doing nothing to him. I was waiting for my mom to come in, so I got the. Uh, Pop up filter. Yeah. Electric kind. Electric kind. Yeah. And uh, I was, you know, I was playing with it, and I stick my tongue in the top, you know, and then yeah. turn it on high and put on a little slot, and it just starts burning. I mean, real bad. Oh, it starts stinking up the kitchen and everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Uh, I bet your pop tarts never taste the same after that. Oh, That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. I hate it when I do that. Yeah, well, I was just sitting there the other day, and uh, I got some of that uh, duct tape. Yeah. I started wrapping my body in it, you know. You know, sticking it to my legs and my chest and everything, and. Uh, it's pretty fun. I was walking around like the Michelin tire man, and uh, <laughs> felt pretty good. And then uh, all of a sudden, I got scared. I couldn't get it off. Oh. And so uh, I hooked it onto uh, the bumper of your best friend's Volkswagen. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it drove off, and I started spinning around. Ah! This thing was really hurting. It pulled all the hair off of me, and it all tear. That's painful. Well, that's that's, that's, that's painful. painful. That's painful. Sound like we had a pretty busy week, you know. Yeah, yeah. What, what are you doing this weekend? I don't know. I'm free. Well, my, my dad's got a new uh, ho uh, chainsaw, the four horsepower kind, you know? Yeah. Chainsaw. Maybe you can come over. That sounds like fun. All right. <laughs> <laughs> instructions all the time, you know, how to number two pencil and erase mistakes completely and all that kind of stuff. Well, I just got through taking a final exam last week and my mind was pretty fried from taking it. it was, I was real tired. I, I was coming back from school and I happened to be driving by one of those uh, hairstyling schools, you know. I thought, well, that being a hairstyling school tipped me off that, hey, they may have final exams. They just don't let you sign up and then graduate. You don't have to take some sort of final exam. So I was wondering, you know, what would be a final exam for a hairstyling school, you know? A computer graded final, you know, that could be pretty fun. So this is sort of my impression of a, you know, instructor giving a final exam at a hairstyling school. The instructor walks in and has an armload of heads like this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's got this look on his face like this with me, okay? 
finals are still coming out. So he goes, all right, uh, students, I've got your uh, test heads here. <laughs> I'm already passing these test heads out face down. You'll keep them on your desk face down until I say begin. So he starts passing, slapping these faces down on the you know, table, because they can't lay them down. They have to slap them down, you know. And these heads over here going, ooh, put me down, easy. <laughs> and so, um, then I could just, you know, he comes up here and says, I'd like to remind you all that this is a uh, computer graded final, therefore you are to use a number two pair of scissors only. Uh, computer will not pick up any tests taken with pinking shears or anything such as that. <laughs> now, um, I'd like to remind you this is a time pressure quiz. Time is of the utmost importance. Please don't stick on one part of the head too long. If you get stuck on one sideburn, put it off. Go to the next sideburn. Go to the veins. Go to the back of the head. But don't get stuck on one sideburn. If there's time at the end of the test, you can go back and finish that sideburn. Um, erase all mistakes completely. If you happen to accidentally snip off an ear, put it back on. <laughs> Wipe away all traces of blood because the computer will pick that up. If I catch anybody uh, cheating by looking at somebody else's head, I will grab their head, rip it up, and throw it in the wastebasket. <laughs> and you'll be doing it here. And so that's sort of my, that's it. That's all. I don't know that.
Okay, I've been told to introduce this next thing. Uh, would you join us, please? We're on the streets of Irving for the Jiffy Cola Taste Test. <laughs> Okay, first of all, I'd like to announce that the youth group has dedicated a portrait to my English teacher. If y'all all would look back here on the back, uh, that's a perfect por picture of my English teacher. Uh, now, uh, what I really came here to talk about today is, uh, Daryl's already said some of this, but, uh, wait, about parents and uh, how they punish you in their different ways. And I think uh, the first kind of punishment we all have it's when we're just a little tad and we do something in our bridges. And uh, at first your parents confuse you because uh, they, they say something like this. Uh, Look at what you did. Oh, it is so pretty. You put it in your bridge. Yes, you did. Let me get the camera. Quick, hurry, come on. Oh, it's so cute. But, but, but then uh, like a week later when that poo-poo gets a little, little stink to it, it uh, 
goes a little different, you know. You are a bad boy. You do it in your fridges again, and you're going to get it. Yes, you will. <laughs> and so, uh, as you get a little bit older, uh, they revert, they try spanking you. And uh, even though it doesn't hurt that much, when you get spanking, uh, my mom's over there going, yeah, you just wait until you get home and see if it hurts. But when I was a kid, I always spazzed when I got spanking. I mean, this is a picture of my mom giving me a whipping. You come back here. What are you doing? Get, him. get off of that lot. Get off of that lot. <laughs> and uh, then when you're getting a little bit older, and this is a this is the one I'm at one right now, and I hate it. Uh, it's uh, they revert to grounding you, and the first kind of grounding you ever get is they give you an amount of time to do something. They say, "I'm going to give you the count of three to mow that lawn, and if you don't, you're grounded for the rest of this year. One, two, three. You're grounded. Get out of here." <laughs> and then uh, then you try to talk them out of it. You say, well, Mom, I didn't have time. Well, I'm sorry. You're grounded another three years just for asking. You know? <laughs> and so uh, then when you get a little bit older, your parents try to talk to you, but they have no idea how to talk to kids. And uh, like uh, they'll say, uh, Sean, why did you hit your little brother in the face? <laughs> well, Mama, don't you talk back to me. What are you doing? <laughs> but Mama, uh, don't you talk back to me. Now, why did you hit him in the face? Well, well, you see, Mom, shut up and don't talk back to me. Now, I want to know why you hit him in the face. Talk to me, son. <laughs> and then uh, they always use the one, uh, because I said so. And, and they'll say, uh, you just say, Mom, Mom, why do I have to do that? Well, well be because I said so, that's why. <laughs> and they're always making up their mind. Like, you'll you say, Mom, I'm, I'm a going on a camping trip this week and I just want to know if you if I can have your permission to go no but mom just sit down and think about it just sit down and think about it I'll give you some time just just think about it no <laughs> and so they're always making up their mind and uh oh and then uh like a you you wait until about three months before you're going to go on a camping trip you say mom can I go on a camping trip? And, well, sure, son. I don't care. You need some time alone. And so about a week before the camping trip, you say something about it like, uh, boy, I can't wait until I'm going to go on that camping trip. What? Now, what is this camping trip all about? Well, well, I told all the guys that I can go, and so we've already got the reservations and everything. You mean there's not any parrots going? Well, well, Mom, you didn't ask about that. Well, I don't care. You're not going, you know. And uh, But the worst kind of punishment they can ever give you is... Just saying it's all right. You go, walk in, Mama, got an F on my report card. Oh, that's fine. Go ahead, I don't care. Mom, aren't you going to whip me? No, no, just go to your room. Have, have, have a Coke or something. But Mom, aren't you going to whip me? Come on. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Now, what you got to do, 
Is fold the bandana in half. <laughs> fold the bandana in half, George? Right. Fold the bandana in half. Are you sure, George? I'm sure. Just, well, you see, it just happened before, George. <laughs> oh, Johnny Carson, okay. Yeah, <laughs> okay, George, fold the bandana in half. Did you fold it in half? Yeah, George. Fold the bandana again. All right. Fold the bandana again, George. So the dishes work. All right. Got it. It's perfect, George. Okay. Got it. Fold it in quarters. Yep. Yeah, fold it in quarters, George. Right, now, what you gotta do is you gotta put the bandana in your mouth. All right. Put the bandana in my mouth, George. It's a, it's a great magic trick. What happened? Put your bandana in your mouth. Okay, George. Now, when I'm going to turn around, I'm going to pull the bandana out of your mouth, and it's going to turn around. It's all right, George. I said the bandana, not the banana. The bandana? The bandana. Oh, the bandana. Oh. 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 regard you as a piece of trash? <laughs> why men find you horribly unattractive? Do you know why you're a complete failure at everything you do? Do you know why your parents moved away and didn't leave a forwarding address? Do you know why small children cry uncontrollably when they are near you? In short, do you know why you are an insignificant piece of slime? <laughs> Sue Ellen, it's because you have Dandruff. <laughs> Sue Ellen, try new Dandaway shampoo, the shampoo that will cleanse you of this ghastly dilemma. <laughs> One week later. Hey, did you see who Nicole was with last weekend? Yeah. Wasn't he a hunk? Uh -huh. Hey, Sue Hi. Ellen. Hi, looking great. I'm having a party tonight. Come, bring a date. Thanks. Hi. 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 How you doing? Peachy. 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 You look so gorgeous. You know what? You're the most beautiful, foxy, sexiest woman I've ever seen. Would you marry me? Oh, we'll see that. All right. Thank you, Dandelay. <laughs> Okay, here it goes. 
Batman's kid. This is great. I'm climbing up a building. Wait up, Robin. Come back.
go to a house or something and you find a switch that doesn't, that doesn't control anything, you go over there and you flick the switch up and down, it doesn't control anything, you can't find out where the switch goes to. I kept, uh, John and I would go over there every once in a while just flip the switch up and down, you know, to get our money's worth. Until about a, a week ago, we got a lady, uh, a letter from this lady in Germany saying, cut it out. <laughs> I don't know what that's all about either. Um, we, bought this, uh, we bought this humidifier and uh, we thought it'd be kind of fun to put wax in it. And uh, now our apartment's all shiny. Uh, so then we bought a, a humidifier and we let them fight it out, you know, to look one another. Um, <laughs> maybe they're better than the end. Thank <laughs> you. 
for their encore performance from uh, South Africa, a band we all know and love, the wonderful, the talented, the, the South African singers, here they are.
thank everybody for coming out here. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, so far, the youth have made a whole lot of money uh, towards Falls Creek, and this really helps us out a lot, and we really appreciate it. That's it. You all take care.